In this video, we have the SMRAZA 4 inch 60 FPS 800 by 480 resolution touchscreen display for the Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer. Everything you need, even a stylus. And uh, in this video, we're going to go ahead and unbox it, run it, run the, the version of Pixel, show you some YouTube video. It looks great. And then when it comes to mobile gaming and what a lot of you probably are interested in, I was only able to get it to work vertically and I spent hours working on this. Now, don't get me wrong, I'll talk a little bit about later in the video, but um, if you're looking to make a portable gaming system, this one not, might not be for you, but it still has a lot of really great features. All right, so there's my Raspberry Pi 4 board. Here is the box, it comes four inch LCD display. It is a touch screen, you have your little adapter to go from the larger HDMI port to the smaller one. And uh, there's the screen, and it does come with a clear case as well. We're gonna put the whole case together, it comes out to this big rectangle. And um, it's 60 FPS, so it's a really smooth screen. It's also fairly inexpensive for a smaller screen. Now, um, it's well packaged, tight box, you know, it could probably handle a lot in delivery. Uh, we're going to get to the software later, but they do have two versions of Pixel, Raspbian, um, and a couple other operating systems, so they will include those for you. But when it comes to the RetroPie, though, they're not going to have any resources for you. And as I was talking about in the beginning of this video, which I'll talk about later when we see Raspberry, the RetroPie, I just, I tried so many different codes in the config file. I took my SD card in and out and I was messing with the config file for hours and I looked around at other YouTubers who were having similar issues. So for now, if you want to play full screen RetroPie, this one might not be it. Now it does come with a fan as well and it's kind of tricked out how the fan sits on this thing so I'll show you in a moment. And within the packaging, you also do get hardware. You get some risers and some screws. There's also a screwdriver, and there's also heat sinks included in the kit as well if you have any issues with heat. Now, uh, it does come with these acrylic pieces here that you do have to remove the stickers on both sides, so I'll just go ahead and fast forward that. Go ahead and remove all the stickers. Next, I'm mounting the fan. It has a little piece of double-sided tape here. You just remove that, put the fan on, and then you'll see in a second here um, you have to reroute those to the ground and the power cable onto the actual back of the screen so it'll plug into there and then it'll get its power from the Pi through the GPIOs which you're going to connect later um, as far as orientation of the fan just look at the instruction manual there but just the label goes uh, faces towards the Pi and then like I said you just need to reroute those cables so you make it nice and tidy once we do this we're going to go ahead and start assembling the actual case I think in the instructions, they tell you to do this step later. So this is where I'm telling you, if you do want to put seat heatsinks, go ahead and put those on. The thing about this pie that I'm using, I'm going to eventually put it back into a, um, a bigger case when I'm done with this screen. Um, so I didn't put them on, but this is where you put those on. You know, they're pretty, just fit the same size with the same size. Okay. So here we got the risers to put on. So four risers, four screws. I already put one on there. And uh, the... Um, the riser on the bottom of the board, and then the nut on the top of the board. If you have smaller fingers, it's going to be a lot easier for you. It's kind of difficult, especially that one right there by the network port. Always a, a pain to get that one in. Now we have all four risers in. Now we're going to get that back plate. And the back plate, um, just you, what you want to look for is the little divot for the micro SD card. So as you see that big divot there, so you can get your fingers in for the micro SD card. So um, right now it's backwards. There you go. And uh, I don't think you can really mess this up. I think if you flipped it 180 degrees, it would still um, it would still be fine. Meaning there's no, I don't think there's a front and a back. Um, you definitely have to orientate the micro SD card though. And then these you just little screw four screws to attach that back plate to the risers that you previously installed. All right, we got the back plate on. Next up, we have this little football field looking thing, football goal post looking thing, a little T that just goes out towards the micro SD card. It only really fits in one way. Watch your fingerprints. <laughs> Wear plastic. 
Next we have the screen, and uh, it just goes on the back of the, the last row of the GPIO pins, just all the way in the back there. I'm gonna get a good shot for you right here. Just sandwiches right on there. Very easy to do. And it'll align with everything else. It should be nice and rectangular. That And it fits right in that little football goal post that we put in just a second ago. And then now the little HDMI adapter. It only really fits in one way. It does stick out quite a bit. Like that adapter will be flush with the plastic piece. It'll almost be hanging out of the plastic piece. Now we got these four little uh, metal risers here that is gonna allow us to put that last plastic piece over the screen. Just go ahead and screw these in and then grab that last plastic piece, set it on top. The last plastic piece as well, I, I don't think there's a front and a back to it. It'll fit either way. So um, as long as it fits, you're all good to go. Smaller fingers are gonna do better here than bigger ones. So here it is in all of its fi finished glory. Um, auxiliary sound is now gonna go through the 3.5 port on the screen itself. It's rerouted and you could throw in a couple different images in there. But uh, as you see, very nice. Um, there's only sides to the one side, the little football post. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's a solid case. It's got nice airflow. It's got the fan. I like it. All right, so for this one, we're gonna go with the desktop version. We can easily hook up a mouse like this. They do have a, a, a pixel version for the Raspberry Pi B. And let's, I'm just gonna connect to the internet really quick. All right, we're on YouTube. Let's load a video. All right, that looks really good. So yeah, you can use this as a little portable display. So as far as speakers, you can see you're getting audio out of the new screen. Audio, no problem. So we'll see in this one, I'm able to, when I don't rotate the screen, I am able to get a full screen here with RetroPie, but I don't wanna play vertically. Um, you may be able to play around with this to get it to play but the minute I do the command to rotate screen it gets really tiny and off-centered so until somebody I'm sure there's a code that you could put in the command line to get it to work um, and this is a nice four inch screen that could be used for a portable but you would think that all I'd have to do right now is rotate the screen. Like, this looks pretty good, right? But unfortunately, it just doesn't allow you to do that. All right, so even if I add the game... So, I mean, technically, I can use it now. Let's try Nintendo. Let's go ahead and do Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is a great vertical game. Wow, the bezels fit and everything. <laughs> now it's not using the entire screen here, but here we go. I and mean, here I'm jumping. Up, over, up. Oh, get up there. Oh! I got so lucky there. 
Oh, he threw it. Okay, start select out. All right, so anyways, I, I did rotate the screen. I tried all sorts of configuration codes for a multitude of Raspberry Pi 4 images, and I can either get it showing up like this or only on the bottom left of the screen. It never was centered. It never used the whole screen. It was honestly unplayable in the landscape mode. The best luck I had was a vertical screen. So closing remarks, if you're looking for a portable RetroPie image screen, maybe there's some code out there. We just need to find it. So just you know, do some Googling, see if somebody else can. But everything I found, I couldn't do it. If you're using this as like an auxiliary monitor, you're going to be running Pixel on it. It works great. There's both an image where you can use the touch screen on its own. There's also an image where you can still run dual displays, although you have to download a custom image to do that. Um, if you just do a clean install, it might not run both displays. But um, it is a touchscreen. It is a stylus. It is 60 FPS. The screen is good. It all depends on what you're going to be using for the screen. So um, if it's for RetroPie, I can't necessarily recommend it. If it's going to be for Pixel, it's good to go. And it's ready and fun. And you can tinker with it and do all kinds of projects. So in those regards, it's great.